So we're going to start off by coming down onto our back, gently flattening the spine down onto your mat. You might tuck the tailbone very subtly up, elongate all the way up to the shoulders, draw the ears away from the shoulders, and then draw your soles of your feet together. From here, we relax down. We switch off through the muscles of the legs and the target area. We switch off through the hips. Through the thighs. Every single muscle melts down and becomes heavy. It's normal for your mind to wander here. It's normal for the body to initially resist the pose. For the mind to initially resist the silence. The energy that we often bring to the mat is likely to be a little bit more yang, just seeing as a lot of our day-to-day -day life often requires a yang energy from us. This would include being proactive and doing, moving around, deciding and responding, creating, and the yin energy includes more being, non-doing, allowing, accepting, stillness, slowness, coolness. So we're just allowing space for the part of ourself that just is doesn't need to do anything at all to be absolutely perfect. We release away all those expectations from ourselves, all responsibility from ourselves. Just for around 40 minutes, and we begin to knead into the body by coming into these poses. These poses are specifically designed for many reasons. Some generally include the meridians, well, all include the meridians, some more than others. We stimulate the meridians that run through our body. We compress the meridians that run through our body. The poses also relax down the muscles of the body so that we can go deeper into the yin tissues so that we can improve the density of the bones the lubrication of the joints the elasticity of the fascia the warmth the tendons and the ligaments and we only really get there when we release and relax the muscles you might find that when you relax down the muscle at the start, it felt quite intense. And then often throughout the course of the pose, it begins to dissipate and become gentler and gentler. Even if you notice that your physical body is moving deeper than when you first started. It's thought that this is because it's the resistance to the pose the resistance of gravity, essentially the engagement of the muscles, fighting the pose, fighting that depth when we tap into the range of motion, is what makes the pose uncomfortable. When you're feeling ready, as slowly as you can, we slowly slide the legs back together, 
<clears throat> and we guide both legs long. We guide the hands onto the opposing elbow. And draw the arms behind you. The shoulders are down and away from your ears. The muscle wants muscles once again relax down. We're just here for around 20 seconds as what we know as a counter pose. In this counter pose, the bones have that chance to reset, but more importantly, the meridian system, which we work with closely in our yin yoga practice, has that opportunity to flow freely. Areas where we may have been compressing or stimulating are thought to have a surge of energy through the area. Here, the area would be the hips, most notably the inner hips, a little bit through the groin, the inner thigh. And with that surge, it's thought to remove all stagnant energy. moving all the way through the channel. Energy blocks are thought to occur in many ways. Because each meridian relates to an emotion, sometimes energy blocks are thought to arise due to an emotional imbalance. Other times, blocks are thought to arise due to physical tension within the body, creating a barrier for that natural healthy flow of energy. Others are thought to be out of balance due to a, an imbalance of our yin-yang energies. So in our yin practice we're targeting all of those initial problems. We're releasing tension from the physical body. We're encouraging a flow through the meridian. We're balancing our yin yang energy, bringing a bit more yin into what can often be very yang led. When you're feeling ready, we're going to step the right leg over to the bottom right corner, and the left leg is going to come over and join it. We then shine our crown up towards the top right corner so that we're coming into this lovely deep banana asana which has the bunny ring and essentially we should resemble a banana here we'd like the top left shoulder all the way down to the bottom left toe to be a nice long lateral bend and the reason we aim so long over deep i.e. we don't want to be a deep capital C, we'd rather be for the boomerang, is because we want to create this very natural openness, i.e. when you relax now, you might find that your body comes a little bit more central. That is absolutely fine. When you relax the arms, you might notice that they splay away from one another. When you relax the legs, the left might come back to center. That's absolutely fine. In the end, wherever you land is your perfect version of the pose. Whilst bearing this in mind, we do also want to feel around a seven out of 10 intensity. This means it's never so intense that all you can think about is when the pose will be over because it's uncomfortable. We also never want to experience any sensations of pain, which might be a little bit more sharp. But we also don't want it to be so gentle that all you can focus on is what's in the mind. We want the body to serve as a grounding tool 
to continually guide us back to present. Each time the mind wanders, the sensations of the pose should serve as a bridge back to present. That perfect in between means that we're tapping into both compassion and discipline. It means that we're treating our body with respect whilst pushing it that tiny bit further within that comfortable and safe range. Comfortable in yin often means something a little bit different to what it does off the mat. For example, the sensations that you feel might be an intense sensation of stretch. But because it's so silent and so still, we have that space just to really tap in and observe the differences between the sensations of stretch and sensations of discomfort. We have that space to improve our awareness of our body, making decisions on what is right for us and what's not. When we're feeling ready, we're going to set both legs back into center, but this time we're only in center for around 10 seconds. We allow stillness here, if that feels okay for you. If your shoulders ache, you could draw them down for this 10 seconds before drawing them up again for the other side. When we allow this complete heaviness in the counter poses, you might be able to tap into these really subtle energy movements. Just as the mind being silent can provide volume for the thoughts that we do have, same can be said for that stillness of your body. We can begin to notice sensations of warmth or coolness, sensations of flow. When you're feeling ready, you're going to go on to the other side. So we set the left leg over to the bottom left corner of your mat. Right leg joints. And then the crown shines up and over towards the top left corner. Allow a relaxation down here. Allow complete heaviness. Allow all of the muscles in your body to relax. It's normal for your mind to wander deeply in poses, so we never approach the mind wandering with frustration. We don't approach the mind wandering with anything at all. We step into the role of the observer. When practicing any meditative practices such as yin yoga, many people find it helpful to compartmentalize the different areas of the mind, even if this is not how you think of the mind off of the mat, it can help for reaching a meditative state. If you think of your identity, the mask that you show other people, the way we perceive ourselves, self-perception, the ego, we 
and then the observer self. If we gently step into this observer state each time we notice ourselves deep in conversation, each time we notice ourselves experiencing a thought, then this allows us that space to observe free from any judgment, free from any responsibility at all. Often in day-to-day -day life, there's this constant demand from our brain, from our mind. The demand to decide, to react, to respond, to agree or disagree, whether things align with our identity or not. When we practice yin, we're free from the responsibility to do anything at all, other than continually observe. When you're feeling ready, set both legs back from center, both arms come back from center, and we're here for 10 seconds. And then when you're feeling ready, we're going to gently draw the left leg up towards us, guiding that left leg in like so. <clears throat> now, we could gently hold the outer left leg like this. We could take the middle finger and index finger around the, right, the left finger's toe or if that all feels a bit much, we could interlace behind the back of the left thigh or grab the foot with a belt instead. So do what feels right for you. There is no right or wrong here. This is a lovely deep hip opener, not just for the outer left hip and a little bit for the inner left hip, but also all the way down the front of the right hip flexors the right thigh, the right side of the groin. So it can start to feel really intense. Just pay attention to what feels right for you here. This can be a difficult one to relax down in sometimes because whilst the legs are completely disengaged, this left arm is switched on, holding the leg in place. <clears throat> A lot of the poses require this yang energy, often from the arms. However, it can be difficult to completely relax through one part of the body whilst using the other to hold it in place. Just spend maybe a little bit more time in this pose, really focusing on the physical parts of the practice before we reach for stillness within the mind. <clears throat> really allowing the wet awareness to be with how the left arm is engaged. Is it just the hand? Is it the whole arm? If you feel tension in the lower body, giving yourself that permission to relax down, checking if it feels okay for you to relax down, if the pose feels right for your body. 
often will find if the poses feel quite intense that there is an area within the target area that is switched on without our awareness. For example, here you might find that the glutes are switched on and rejecting gravity. The outer or inner hips might engage, resisting the pose. And that as soon as we relax that area down, the resistance gently dissipates. So does the discomfort. When you're feeling ready, slowly guide your right leg up towards you, taking hold of that right foot in a way that feels right for you. So if this is a bit of a reach, you could hold with belts. You can hold the big toes, you can hold just behind the thighs, and you can even let the soles of the feet shine forwards whilst holding the thighs, or whilst holding the big toes. It's all about making your happy baby work for you. Traditionally, we have those soles of the feet shining up to really deeply target through the backs of the legs as well, of the hips. You might notice a little bit of a difference between the two legs, the two hips. That's normal and that's absolutely fine. Pay attention to any sensations that arise. And we pay attention to them similarly to how we pay attention to a drifting thought. We don't attach any secondary meaning. We just observe. We don't identify with or reject. We don't trace back. Just observe that exact present moment. Once you've observed a thought, we allow it to exist in stillness. This means we don't trace the conversation back to where it originated. We don't carry on the conversation by deciding if we agree or disagree. If it aligns with us, and our identity and our beliefs. And this often happens quite naturally. The mind always wants to be moving, to be wondering, as this is what we've trained it to do and this is what helps us a lot in everyday life. But it needs a chance to rest, to improve cognitive function, to improve emotional regulation and memory and attention and to improve the way we feel overall. When you're feeling ready, you're going to drop the left sole of the foot and be really slow and intentional with how you do this. You might first drop just the sole of the foot nice and slowly and then after a while you might begin to heel toe that leg long. You might find that it feels a lot more sensitive than the side. That is completely normal. And we're doing unilateral movements where we do one side then the other. We treat each side of the body as completely separate from one another in the end. We just respond to what is in front of us in the present. If you find that the leg is falling quite wide to the side or quite far to the back of the room, that is absolutely fine. In the end, there is no perfect aesthetic of the pose. There is no perfect way to practice other than exactly as you are in the present. And the same can be said for the mind. Whilst there is a pattern that we'd like to follow, meaning observing when the mind has wandered, 
seeing the thought as something that you are simply experiencing rather than something that you need to engage with, something that reflects anything on who you are. It's simply something that you, the observer, is experiencing in your present moment. Once we have viewed the thought like this, we don't push it away in silence, but we don't put it in to fill the mind with conversation. We just allow the thought to exist in our mind, in our consciousness, in our present moment and awareness for as long as necessary until it feels less weighty, until it feels like it is pulling us in or pushing us away or that we need to pull it in or push it away. We just observe Once it seems to lose its weight, lose its grip on us, then we simply shift our awareness back to a different element of our present moment, such as the sensations you feel, such as the breath. When you're feeling ready, please slowly drop the right leg, the sole of the foot comes down, and then we send that leg long in time. We're just going to rest here in our counter pose for 10 seconds. And when you're feeling ready, we're going to move into our next pose. So we have two options. Option one is a nice, simple twisted roots pose. Option two, that leg, that top leg can be extended long. I can't extend it long here because there's a radiator, but imagine that my left leg is extended long. And then bending your right leg deeply, like so. You take your left hand down onto your right foot for cat pulling its tail. We relax and release down through the muscles and become heavy. Switching off through the muscles. As we mentioned before, each pose is designed to target the meridians of the body. Here we're targeting all six of the lower body meridians. There is a gentle arch in the lower back, which targets the urinary bladder meridian. There is a deep twist in the torso, which targets the gallbladder meridian. And then through the hips, through this deep bend of the right leg and through the gentle crossing over of the left leg. We're targeting the liver, the kidney, the stomach and the spleen meridians. We allow that complete heaviness When you're feeling ready, 
we slowly slide back through centre. And we're going to come straight onto the other side. So we either send that right leg long, coming into cat pregnant's tail, lifting that left leg into the bend, taking hold of it in your right hand, or we draw that top leg into the bend and keep your base leg long. There are as many ways that you can make it work for us. You could place your left hand on top of that right leg. You could even go for a double bend, like so. You could go for twisted roots with a straight leg. There are many ways that we can make the pose work around our body, rather than making the body work around a pose. We never have to perform a specific aesthetic of a pose. It's all about making our practice work around us. When we commit to stillness in a pose, we only do this after we found our edge which is the point in which gravity lowers us down to, and it's free from pain, and it feels intuitively right for you. So you find that pose and you know that it's okay for your body to begin to relax down. We always want that 7 out of 10. And even though as we release and reduce intensity or resistance from our body, that the intensity may decrease, we want that initial pose to be 7 out of 10. So for example, for myself, with this leg facing down a little bit, it's a nice 7 out of 10. I lift it for that perfect line across, it's a 10 out of 10. That would mean lack of focus, only thinking about when it's going to end, the mind wandering to the near future, rather than staying present. If it was too gentle, the mind might wander back, forwards, anywhere but the present. The mind has been trained to constantly move, to be responsive and reactive and this helps us so much in day-to-day -day life but when we're constantly in that yang energy it can lead to burnout can mean that we begin to feel out of touch with the body, with the mind, with our emotions. We just allow ourselves to send acceptance to ourselves exactly as we've arrived on the mat. We accept our feelings, our mind, our body in the pose. We don't need to change or do anything at all. When you're ready, we come back through centre. We straighten the spine. We draw our feet wide and our knees together. And we relax down here in this nice little counter pose. Releasing through the lumbar spine. and deeply.
And when you're feeling ready, send the legs long. Draw the arms down by your side and relax into your savasana. We allow ourselves here to be completely London. The body is heavy. The mind is still. And anything that arises is met with acceptance. An emotion, a thought, physical sensation. Unless it's uncomfortable or painful, we just accept whatever comes up. It's thought that a resistance, similarly to within the physical body, how when the muscles are switched on and rejecting the pose, that's what causes discomfort. The same notion can be applied within the mind. That a resistance towards a thought or a belief is what creates that discomfort. And that if we just accept and observe, that it loses its hold, it becomes more bearable, more comfortable. Acceptance doesn't necessarily mean we're agreeing or disagreeing. We're not taking it on as our own or part of us. We're just acknowledging it as part of our present moment experience. We have brought the body into a state of stillness the breath into a nice, slow, steady pace, knowing that the body and the mind are completely interconnected, knowing that when the body is here, the mind follows suit eventually. We place no pressure on ourselves and how that might be, how that might feel or look. We don't ever need to feel perfectly happy and calm and zen anymore. We simply use the body as a tool to bring a little bit more stillness and calm into the mind. To gently shift our energy state into more of a moon-like state, more accepting, more balanced. Being doesn't mean that when we go throughout our day, we'll be non-productive. It's quite the opposite. It usually means we'll feel a little bit more balanced. We won't burn out. It usually means we're less quick to react. We might respond from the space of the observer self a little bit more. The observer self is full of compassion, love, acceptance, allowing. And these all come from a state of your natural being. You don't have to do anything at all to tap into those. We just have to peel away the other parts of ourselves. We just have to allow the ego, the identity to take a back seat. And this happens habitually the more and more we practice meditative practices like yin yoga. We've tapped into the different meridians, allowing an improvement of energy flow through those areas, most importantly through the hips today, which in turn allows us to tap into different emotions more so. We know that different meridians relate to different emotions, and it's thought that most relate on a spectrum, positive and negative emotions. 
When we practice yin, we don't actually want to reach the top of that spectrum in every meridian, in every emotion. We're not aiming to feel on top of the world every minute of every day. What we look for in yin is to bring us into the middle so that we can experience the healthy full range of emotion, so that we can experience balance appropriately. We're looking to remove blockages so that we're not stuck at the end of one spectrum or completely cut off from it. When we're feeling ready, we're going to begin to bring movement into our fingers and into our toes. Into your knees and into your elbows and hug the legs in. And then roll onto one side, making your way up into a comfortable upright position. Guiding your hands into Anjali Mudra. Namaste.